What's up, y'all? It's Erica, and we're gonna answer, what is grinding? I've never tried to make coffee by just pouring hot water over whole beans. Water is lazy, and it wants like the easiest solution possible. So when you grind it, you make it easier for water to wash through the coffee and pull out all of that delicious goodness. Now, consistency is key with coffee. We like our water like the same temperature, and we like our grind size the same consistency as well. A uniformity in grind size makes it easier for the water to extract the same amount of stuff out of each coffee ground consistently throughout the brew. So to do that, we need a grinder. Now at home, I use a burr grinder that gives me like really good consistency, equal particle sizes, blah, 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 blah. It's good for me and for what I need for pour overs and different types of brew methods and adjustments and all of that. But luckily, if you don't have that, you don't need that to make really good coffee. If this is what you have at home, which is a blade grinder, that's great. I'm gonna teach you how to make really awesome coffee grinding it on the blade grinder. So let's look at what this is in the first place. So it's a two-sided blade that just kind of spins around and chops the coffee haphazardly. It just kind of Wherever the bean comes, it's just chop, just chopping it up. Ugh. There is no uniformity here. But there is a hack where you can like kind of shake it like a Boston shaker to get a little bit more uniformity. So let's see what this looks like. Ooh. Now we're gonna see what this looks like. Oh, not bad, actually. Good job, me, I did a pretty decent job. There's definitely always going to be these big old boulders that show up just because that's the nature of the game. So if you see them, pull them out. But generally things are pretty uniform. But something else that happens when you grind coffee, especially dark roast, is you get these things called fines. Now, the beauty of grinding on a blade grinder and getting fines when you're making coffee in a Black & Decker or a Mr. Coffee or a very common coffee maker uh, is that the fines actually help add mouthfeel and they help add consistency in extraction, which is pretty cool. So that's grinding. And another component of grinding, which is kind of like a cousin to it, is measurement. Now, I come from the specialty coffee world where we weigh everything out with a gram scale. Not every kitchen has a scale. You're more likely to find this in a typical American kitchen. Now, there's no consistency on what a scoop is. I like to say that a scoop is two tablespoons and that's my consistent measurement. So because we're going by volume and not weight, there is something that we really wanna look out for. Roasting creates different densities and brittleness of different coffees. Light roasted coffee is not as brittle and doesn't break apart as easily, but dark roast does. So four tablespoons of light roast coffee are going to grind different into a different volume than four tablespoons of dark roast coffee. So let's go see what I'm talking about. Voila. Still gotta get these fines. There aren't as many, but you still gotta get them. So there it is. The same amount of whole bean coffee, dark, produces more ground coffee than light. Now what do we do with this information? Just use it to adjust your recipes accordingly and make sure that if a recipe is calling for whole bean or if it's calling for ground, you might have to use a little bit more light roast in your recipe or a little bit less if you're using dark. But that's the beauty of coffee is that it's an endless experimentation and you get to play and contrast and figure out exactly what recipe works best for you. Just because these two things are different doesn't mean that they're bad. It just means that you know a little bit more than you did before as to how to make the best cup of coffee possible. So now that we know what coffee is, and we know what water is, and we know what grinding is, we're ready to brew. If you have any questions, please stick them in the comments below and I'd love to answer them. Thanks for watching and stick around for our next and very first brewing video.